Good evening and welcome. We're glad you could be here tonight with us for our Good Friday Tenebrae service. And this is a service where we surrender our sins to the cross of Jesus. As we come to the end of our Lenten season, uh, which ended last night and on Monday, Thursday, uh, we ended our 40 days of fasting, our 40 days of our wilderness journey to bring us up to the point of Good Friday. And as we go through this time in our church life, it's a time for us to look back and reflect on our own lives. And this is a time for us to surrender those things in our lives that would separate us from God. And so the tenebrae service that we have tonight is our opportunity to, to surrender those things that would seem to separate us from God to turn them over to us at the cross tonight. So as you came in, hopefully you have a piece of paper and something to write with, and you grabbed a nail in there, and you need to write your sin that you want to give up to the cross tonight on that piece of paper. And then those pieces of paper will be collected at the end of the service, and they will be taken back, and um, I actually will burn those. So nobody will see those. That's between you and God. That's surrendering tonight. So as we come together tonight in total surrender of ourselves, as Jesus surrendered himself on the cross, and again, we have Sunday coming. So that's something to look forward to. Our call to worship tonight will be a responsive one. So on the screen you will see other words those that are in yellow will be the ones that you will repeat after me so there we go grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ amen, amen. blessed be the name of the lord our god who redeems us from sin, sin and death. death god is light in whom there is no darkness at all jesus christ is the light of the world and this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. We love darkness rather than light. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us open our time with prayer today. Almighty Father, as we hear your word tonight, look on us with mercy, your family for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners, to suffer death on the cross, who is alive and glorified with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 A Holy Week is the most important week in the life of the church and in our faith. It is during this week that we observe the end of Lent and began, that began with Ash Wednesday just a few weeks ago on February 14th. This past Sunday, we celebrated Palm Sunday with the triumphant arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. Wednesday was Holy Wednesday, and on this day, Jesus is anointed at Bethany in the home of Simon the leper. This is also the day that Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday, two important things happen on that day. First, Jesus would take off his robe, don an apron, and humble himself and serve the disciples by washing their feet. In doing this, Jesus was also teaching them that they are to love and serve one another. Second was the Passover meal which we have come to know as the Last Supper. It is the final meal that Jesus would eat with the disciples. It is in this final meal that the Old Testament observance of the Passover feast was brought to its fulfillment. And now today, Good Friday, the day that we remember Christ's crucifixion. While what the Jewish leaders and the Romans did was not in the least bit good, what would come from it was indescribably good. We gather tonight to worship through a tenebrae service. Tenebrae is a Latin word meaning darkness or shadows. 
A service of Tenebrae or Shadows is based on the 12th century late night, early morning service and is a time of meditation and reflection on what Christ has done for us. We begin this evening with seven candles, one of which is the Christ candle. With each reading, a candle will be extinguished until the service ends in darkness and silence. Tomorrow is Holy Saturday. It is a day of somber reflection of what Christ's death on the cross means for each one of us. It is the day that the disciples and followers of Jesus grieved his death. Imagine all that must have been going on through their minds. Imagine what the world would be like if we did not have the hope that Christ's resurrection brings. As we enter into our time of communion this evening, I ask you to reflect on your lives, what your lives have been and what they have meant to you and to others. Have you been called into a life of service? Do you figuratively wash others' feet? Jesus set an example for his disciples in that he washed their feet to show that he was no better than anyone else, but he came to serve and not to be served. And so as that example that he set for the disciples is the same example that he sets for us tonight. In our call for communion tonight, it's a time to gather together to remember the sacrifice that was made for us, to remember the things that Jesus taught us the example that he set for us in his life and his living out of his testament to us. It is a time that where we brought on the Old Testament and that was fulfilled in his death on the cross. And at the same time, a New Testament was born out of that. And this New Testament that we have today, a new covenant in his blood and in his body, on the cross and in his death is the covenant that is for us to be a part of. And it is a covenant that is eternal. That never ends. So as we come into our time of communion today, we too can participate in that sacrificial meal. That Passover meal. That death would be passed over for us in the body of Christ so that we are no longer dead to our sins, that we are no longer subject to a death penalty, a death sentence upon ourselves, because Christ took the sins of us, our, each and every one of us, to the cross and extinguished those sins in his death, in his body, and in his blood. So as we remember our communion today, we remember that time. And in that meal, when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. And later on in the meal, he took a cup. And after he blessed it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And each time that we take of this bread and drink of this cup, we are to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. He gave us salvation through his blood. He washed us clean from our sins because of his death on the cross. And so tonight in this tenebrae service, as we remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us, he is giving us the opportunity to take our sins to the cross tonight, to give them up, to end the separation that we have with God and to end our disobedience to God. So as we take our communion tonight, I want you to understand and remember, this is your opportunity to participate in that Passover meal, where death will pass you by, the sin will be forgiven, and we will be washed clean with the blood of Christ, the body of Christ which is broken for you. The blood of Christ, which is shed for you, take and drink. Thanks be to God. During the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of his 12 disciples 
as they shared their final meal. It was an act of hospitality. It was an act of humility. So let's begin tonight with an act of quietly and humility and humbly receiving this breaking of the bread and the drinking of the cup. And as we do, we need to remember then these mighty acts and these mighty deeds that he did. The cross is set and the nails are ready. Bring your troubles, your sins, anything that you wish to give to Jesus, write them down and then come up and nail them to the cross. After the service, we will dispose of the papers and give the nail out as a reminder of turning them over to Jesus. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was pierced through our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, he bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to our sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. So let us take this time right now to bring our sins to the cross. When we look at this passage in Isaiah, it describes what's going to happen to Jesus some 740 years later. He describes the suffering of the Messiah and then writes the reasons for his suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions, for our rebellion against him. For our rebellion against God, he was crushed for our iniquities, our depravities, the things that separate us from God. By his stripes, we are healed. Understand this is a spiritual healing, not a physical healing we're talking about here. Our relationship with God was broken. We disobeyed God and we separated ourselves because of our disobedience. And so by Christ taking those stripes upon himself, by his scourging, we are healed. We have a broken relationship that is now healed through Christ on the cross. And it is washed clean. And we are washed clean by the blood of Christ. The prophet Isaiah was pointing out that our sins required an atonement, meaning they required a payment for our sins and our sinful nature. Our sins required forgiveness. Our sins needed to be washed off of each and every one of us. But the traditional way of God's people to atone for sin in the Old Testament was through the blood sacrifice of animals performed at the temple. But in order to provide atonement and to be washed of our sins, a perfect sacrifice was coming for all mankind. God's only son, Jesus. Jesus took on the sins of the entire world and made an atonement for them once and for all so that you and I are set free from those sins. Our penance for our disobedience is paid by Jesus Christ on the cross. By our baptism, we are symbolically made clean. But see, that's a reaffirmation of what Jesus has already done. It is a way for us to show our acknowledgement and acceptance of that sacrifice that he made for us. Christ Jesus gave his life for us so that we might live and live eternally. It honors that sacrifice when what we bring to the cross, we leave at the cross. 
We don't pick it up. We don't carry it away. We leave it there at the cross to be forgiven completely and totally. Tonight as we go through the lessons, listen to the words of scripture from Matthew. Here from Matthew 26, lesson one, betrayal. Starting at verse 20, when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Lesson two, agony and rest. This comes from Matthew 26, 36 through 50. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping, and he said, couldn't you even keep watch with me for one hour? And then he asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. And when he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. And then when he returned to the disciples and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. And the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him was a large crowd of armed men with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged for the signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. And going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Lesson three, denial. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. 
But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Lesson four, accusation. This comes from Matthew 27, 11 through 14. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you have said so. When he accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply. Not to a single charge. To the great amazement of the governor. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two men do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. And they all answered him, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that insisted on the uproar was starting, he took water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your responsibility. And all the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he leased Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. Lesson 5 from Matthew 27, verses 31 and 43. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You, who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said. 
but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Lesson six, death. This comes from Matthew 27, 45 through 50. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling down Elijah. And yet others had said, immediately one of them ran and got a sponge and he filled it with wine vinegar and he put it on a staff and he offered it to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Lesson 7, Son of God, Matthew 27, 51 and 54. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Lesson 8, burial. It's found in Matthew 27, 57 through 60. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and then went away. Let us pray. May Jesus Christ, who for our own sakes became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you today. Lord, let us open our hearts
to understand the message that we have heard tonight. Open our minds to what you have set up for us from your son, Jesus. His sacrifice was for us, for our sins today. Lord, we have nailed our sins to the cross. We give them to you. We turn them over to you. We ask that we would be purified by your blood, that we would be washed clean, that we would have renewal, that we would be reunited with you, Lord God. That through your sacrifice, that we would be redeemed by your blood. Lord, we ask that you would give us this opportunity to lay ourselves before you, to turn our lives over to you, and to recommit ourselves to being your disciples, your Christians, your brothers and sisters in Christ today. And Lord, help us to go out into the world and fulfill your great commission for us to go into all of the world, make disciples of all peoples, and in you that you would empower us and embolden us to do that very thing to reach out to the lost and the least and become a servant to them. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and feet here on the earth. We pray all these things in your precious and holy name today.